welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these super cute handmade pot holders. These are quilt as you go pot holders, so they're lots of fun. You don't have to do really much measuring or anything like that. They're also a perfect project for kids. You can really have a lot of fun with these and get creative. So let's go ahead and see what you'll need for this project. For this project, you're going to need some sort of insulated lining. I'm using Insul Shine by Warmco. Some quilt batting, a piece of fabric for your backing, some fun fabric scraps, and a piece of fabric for your binding that's about two and a half inches wide by 42 inches long. You'll also want some kind of acrylic ruler and a rotary trimmer and probably a pair of scissors. Now I've just pressed my binding in half wrong sides together and just set this aside so that it's all ready to go. And now we're gonna go ahead and start on the project. By the way, if you're curious about my pretty pile of scraps here, I'm just using some of my leftovers from my Peppermint Pines quilt. This is the Hollyberry line by Cory Yoder for Moda, and it's absolutely beautiful. I don't have many greens left, so I did steal some greens from one of the other lines that I have uh, just to kind of fill in the gaps. So let's just set these aside, and I'm gonna grab my piece of batting and, and some of my scrap strips. Now I'm gonna be sewing on my piece of batting because I wanna be able to press this when we're done. And so uh, you can't really press onto the Inselbrite because of the coating that it has on it. So we're gonna go ahead and sew on this and then we'll add our Inselbrite as an extra layer of protection for our pot holder. But let's go ahead and get started. This first one we're gonna do in a traditional quilt as you go format. The second one we're gonna do, we're just gonna be adding strips and then quilting when we're done. Now to start this off, we're just going to be taking one of our pieces of fabric here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right in the middle. Now I'm not measuring, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. And then I'm going to find another scrap that I feel like is complementary. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that next to it. Now as you can see, it's not the right length, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this here, but I'm gonna make a cut there, and then I'll just cut it off, and I'll set that aside for later. So that looks pretty good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and put this right sides together. And I'm gonna take it to my machine and I'm gonna sew one quarter of an inch down this side here. Then I'm gonna flip it open and press it with my seam roller. And then I'm going to do some quilting lines and then I'm gonna add another piece and add quilting lines. And we're just gonna repeat that process until we have our square of batting filled up with lots of pretty fabric. The center here is completed and you'll notice I didn't measure anything or anything. I'm just really kind of eyeballing this project. It's a lot of fun and you can just kind of have fun with it. Don't worry about it too much. Now, if you have a piece like this that's too short, you can always sew another piece onto it to make it longer. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that one for now and see if I can find a longer piece, which I have right here. Alrighty, and now I'm gonna add this to this edge like this, just like I did the last piece. Again, I'm just pressing this open with my seam roller. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of stitching to it, and then I'm gonna continue adding pieces around my pot holder until it's completely filled up. So here's my finished block, and as you can see, it's kind of wonky, so I'm just gonna be taking my ruler here, and I've got my eight and a half inch marks, and I'm just going to kind of center this in here. Next, I'm just going to trim off my excess here. And then I'll just rotate this around. And trim off my extra. And as you can see, this one's already quilted, so this one's ready to be moving on to the next step. Let's go ahead and do our second one. Now for this second one, we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. I'm going to add all of the strips one at a time, but instead of quilting them, I'm actually gonna wait until I'm all done and I'm gonna quilt the entire thing with a cute little cross hatch quilt pattern. So I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine. I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch right here. I will flip this open and press it with my iron or my seam roller and then add another piece the exact same way. And I'm just gonna keep going until I have my square mostly filled up. 
and then we can trim it to our finished size. Now you can do these um, pot holders any way that you'd like. You can do them quilt as you go traditionally like I just showed you, or you can do this way. Either way is totally fine. I just wanted to give you some options so you can kind of personalize these and make them unique. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a little ruler here and draw a few lines for me to follow. Now this is a friction erasable marker so you can kind of see it on there. And I think I'm gonna go three, two inches. Let's do that. You can do whatever you want on these though. You could even free motion quilt them. And like I said, as you're adding your pieces, you can add little um, quilting strips as well. That's kind of where the quilt as you go gets its name. Um, so you can do whatever you want on these. Next, I'm going to do some that are going this way. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna iron these off, these pink marks off, so you won't even be able to see them. So So all of our drawn lines are gone now so we can trim up our pot holder. Next we're going to be getting out our Insel Bright and <laughs> this stuff is pretty, pretty 70s Mork and Mindy disco era. Give this video a thumbs up if you watched Mork and Mindy when you were younger. All right and then I'm going to go ahead and just trim this down to eight and a half by eight and a half just like I did our pot holder. So there's one. Cut a second one. And here we go, we've got our two pieces of Insel Bright. Next we're gonna make a sandwich. So we're gonna take our backing fabric and I'm gonna place that right side down so that's towards my table. I'm going to take my lining um, of my Insel Bright fabric and put that on top of that. And then we're gonna take one of our finished Quilt As You Go panels and place that on top so we have a nice little sandwich here. Now I should mention that you can do a Quilt As You Go panel right on to the Insel Bright lining. I actually like having the double layers with the regular batting plus the Insel Bright anyways because I think it just makes for a better pot holder and you don't burn your hands as much. So next I'm gonna grab some clips and I'm going to clip all these layers together and then I'm gonna take them over to my machine and I am going to do a basting stitch all the way around the outside edge. A basting stitch is basically just a really long stitch length and it just holds everything in place so that it's not sliding all around when we go to add our binding. So I'm gonna do that for both of these pieces. Now, if your squares get a little bit wonky after sewing all those layers together, just take them back over to your cutting board and square them back up. So here are our two pieces, and now we're gonna make some handles for them. Next, I'm gonna take one of my scrap pieces, and I'm going to cut it about two inches wide by about four, inch and four and a half inches long. And I actually have this duplicated or folded over, so I cut two pieces at once there. And they don't have to be perfect, but we're gonna use these to make little hooks on the back of our pot holders and then I'm going to just take these over to my iron really quick and press in this edge a quarter of an inch this edge a quarter of an inch and then press it in half and then I'm going to just sew right along this edge to seal that up and I'm just leaving these short edges raw so don't worry about those those are going to get hidden when we add our binding so we are ready to move on our last step. So we've got our little straps here and then we've got our binding. I need to get my other piece of binding. But first I'm going to flip one of my pot holders over and just take one of my straps here and just fold it in half so that the raw edges are together. And then I'm just going to place them on one of the top corners here. You could also do it this way so you kind of have a diagonal hanging one, which I think would be really cute on your oven. So let's do that way. And I'm just gonna clip that in place and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And just clip that in place. Now when you're going around this, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you have that in your binding when you add it. Now we're gonna take our binding over to our machine and bind up our pot holders and we'll be done. So I'm gonna start by adding my binding to the front of my pot holder. Now you can add it to the back side first and flip it around to the front. It's totally personal preference, it doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick on how to add binding to these smaller pieces because you just don't have a whole lot of room to work with and by in binding it traditionally, it helps if you have a little bit more room. So this is gonna be a new little trick. So we're gonna open up our binding like this and I'm gonna fold this top corner down to make this um, kind of a diamond shape. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that down. And for this side, I'm just gonna leave it open for most of the way. And 
And then once I get farther down here, I'll just go ahead and kind of put that in there. We're gonna sew till we're one quarter of an inch away from this other edge. Leave the needle in the down position, lift up our presser foot and just turn it about 45 degree angle and then backstitch and cut our threads. We're gonna pull our project out of the machine and I'm gonna place my finger right here on the corner. I'm gonna pull my binding up and away from my body so that the raw edges are lined up right here. And I've got kind of this diagonal here. I'm gonna leave my finger right there and then pull it down toward my body so that we've got, the again, the raw edges lined up right here and we have this little mitered flip right there. I'm gonna put it back in my machine and continue going and I'm gonna repeat that process on all four corners. We're back to our kind of starting weird little flap thing we've got going on here. So I'm gonna kind of hold that out and just lay this down so that we've got this little kind of triangle shape. And right there, I just kind of want to make a mental note. I'm gonna open this back up and lay this down right on top of it. And just make sure that this piece comes, I would say about an inch past that point. So I'm just gonna cut it somewhere in there and just tuck that inside there like so, and I am gonna pull on it just a little bit just to make sure everything's snug. And then now we've got a nice folded edge there and we don't have to do any funky sewing to get our binding finished. All right, we're done with the front side. We're ready to flip it over and add it to the back now. And so I'm just gonna turn it over and I'm just going to push these corners out just like this. All right, now we're going to pull our binding back to the back side here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side that has my little join, just to kind of get it out of the way. And I'm gonna sew really close to the edge of this binding, right about like right along the edge, as close as I can, about an eighth of an inch or so. And just take your time on this section right here. There's a lot of layers right there. Okay. Now when we get to this first corner, we're going to, you can do it one way or the other. You can fold up the bottom and then fold over the side, or you can fold over the side and fold up the bottom. Either way, you wanna just make sure that you have this little mitered corner right here. I like to kind of do it this way because, I don't know. And then we're gonna leave our Needle in down position, lift our presser foot, rotate, put our presser foot back down and keep sewing. And here is our finished pot holder. I'm gonna go ahead and add the binding to the other one the same exact way and I will meet you here when I'm done. So here are our finished pot holders. I personally prefer where you add the binding to the front first. I think it just makes this front edge look a little bit cleaner, but that's just my opinion. Um, here is the one where I added it to the back first and I feel like the back looks a little bit cleaner. It just covers, it just comes out a little bit more. So I don't like doing it this way, but I know some people do. So just do whichever way you prefer. And then of course we have our little hanging tabs here and we're all done. These are perfect gifts to give as friends. You can put them in a gift basket with some other cooking supplies and have kind of a personal personalized homemade touch to your gift. All right guys, so as you can see, that was a super fun and easy project. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun projects for you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.